Good afternoon. It's a very special day for us. We have with us somebody whom we have seen mostly on the TV screen and he has kindly agreed to interact with our students mainly. The plan for the day is we have questions already filtered so the names will be announced. That student will stand up and ask the question and sit down. Okay. Sir, Udesh Sharma. Good afternoon, sir. So my question to you is that in such an illustrious career spanning five decades with Tata Group, sir, have you had any moment of regret? So when you look back in retrospect, is there any decision that you think you could have chosen otherwise? Uh, <coughs> I guess you can. Uh, yes, there have been many moments when I think most people in their careers have moments of disillusionment or, or a, a sense that they don't know where they're going. And I've had my share of those. Uh, as many people may not know, I spent the first eight years uh, in an endless training program that seemed to be going nowhere. I, I was put on the shop floor of two or three companies. Uh, no sense of answerability, no direction, and I considered those to be a waste of time. In hindsight, looking back, I think maybe it was a, a very valuable investment in time, not eight years, but that kind of training program. Subsequently, I think in many cases, you take a decision as you go through, or a position, and the position you took turns out to be a wrong position or one that doesn't work out the way you hoped it would. Those are also times of regret. What you do thereafter, I think, is what makes you or builds your character. You run away from the situation, you face it, you, you take the blame for it, or you uh, maneuver around it as such. So, I think those moments of disillusionment hit all of us at, at, any, at any one time. The reason I haven't specifically answered your question in terms of events is that there are so many that you, you can't single them out. Salmia? on the fact that our talent moves away from India? You know, I think you must not be uh, too harsh on events that happen. All of you will face uh, a decision as to if you're passionate about what you're doing, as to whether the best opportunities, it may be in research or maybe in, in your career development is here or somewhere else. And I think what we, rather than complain about the fact that talent has flown across the waters to another country, or that uh, a particular person 
gains prominence or wins a Nobel Prize or then we seem to then ask ourselves why not here but all the years that he or she have worked towards her or his goal we forget because they were anonymous all through that period of time so I think what we need to do as a country and as citizens of that country is try to uh, replicate the opportunities, the freedom, <coughs> the ability to grow as there may be overseas. If I might say so, our scientific community to a great extent is its own worst enemy because there's a tendency for people higher up in the in that community to not allow younger people to to shine because they may challenge some of the knowledge base that may have become dated. So these people go back to the US or the UK or wherever they are. We should ask ourselves, is that correct? And not the fact that the people went because the good people are going to go where the opportunities lie. We have a question from Dr. Tandi. Just to confirm, you talking about joining hands with the, and the sort of PPP uh, situation. You know, I think any kind of venture that's joint needs to have the commitment of all parties and the desire to make it successful. I think most of the time, the reason that we have a disconnect is very often the government has a mindset that is that of monitoring, controlling, uh, and or fitting into a political system what their enterprise does, and, and a private sector does, has a different view. Wherever, wherever there has been a convergence of those views, a joint venture of that sort has worked very well. The unfortunate thing, again, on the government side is the changes in, in the people you're dealing with because they're not permanently uh, assigned to that project. They keep changing based on political issues. And I think uh, there's some countries in Europe, like France, that is able to have joint ventures quite successfully or in fact even state organizations quite successfully because they run like private organizations. So uh, I think it's an issue of, of mindset as we come together. Jim Joseph Elias. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. Has there been a situation where you had to choose the lesser of two evils? And lesser? Lesser of two evils. Yeah. And how did you make your decision? That's a difficult question to answer. Uh, I think as you, as you grow in your organization, you will find that you get lonelier and lonelier. You have less and less people to use as a sounding board. And your decision is eventually a lonely decision. Uh, then you're forced to look at options as you see them at that moment in time. And, and indeed, many of your decisions may not be the best. My, my, my own view on that is you should do what you believe is right. It may be the tougher decision. It may be the tougher option. It may be the more troublesome option that you have, but if deep inside you, you know that it's the right decision for the right reasons, not for the wrong reasons, then you should go ahead and take it and take the, take the uh, flack if there's flack to be given, 
or uh, humbly accept the kudos of the kudos to be given. And if you took the wrong decision, then hopefully you would learn from that when you take the next decision. I, I can't think of anything more to say to you on that. First of all, I'm not in the group any longer so that I feel somewhat hesitant to comment on, on the impact to India. But I think as, as a position, uh, even when I was group chairman, I was of the view that FDR in, uh, FDI rather in, in multi-brand retailing would benefit India. And uh, we, have, we have constantly seen policy changes or policy proclamations, which in my view are often initiated by vested interests who do not want to see something happen. They get translated into, into government policy. And I, I feel strongly that the multi-brand retail business, the uh, direct investment in it has been driven to some extent by that, uh, by that vested interest segment of the population. I don't believe that the, that the small ma and pa shops are going to be impacted. They are not impacted overseas. They continue to exist, the convenience stores and the small, and perhaps the the only sufferers are going to be the middlemen between the farmer and the market today. But I believe that, that it would be a good thing for the country and a good thing for the consumer. My question to you is, given that the Indian aviation industry is in a bad shape, overcrowded with players and most of them in financial trouble. What made the Tata Group return to aviation? Sorry, what made the Tata Group? Return to aviation. Yeah, well, you have made various proclamations at various times saying we won't enter and then we suddenly have entered. Uh, the, the sector has become very busy, that is true. There's also a moment in time when I think there has to be consolidation like there has been in other, in other places. And so the, the view on, on that is that now with the, with the partnership with the two partners that we have, that perhaps we have a good chance of surviving in that marketplace and making a difference, A, in the low cost low-cost uh, airline and in the full services sector. Ne neither of them will compete with the other. And uh, eventually, we hope that each of them can be in their own sector, the leaders in, 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 that, in that segment. So it has led us to partner with two successful airlines, uh, AirAsia on the one hand and SIA on the other, where we believe that together we can make it. Maybe alone what I said before was true, that we would not want to enter the airline business as we did in 1932. But as a joint venture in both cases, I think we would be, would be uh, a candidate to be a leader in that particular segment. Subranshi. 
the challenges for Jaguar Land Rover? In terms of regulation? The regulatory and factors. Okay. In, in the UK or here? Both. Uh, that's very easy to answer. There's absolutely no regulatory constraints on us in the UK. It was, it was no different from, uh, uh, probably much easier than us trying to acquire a company in India. Uh, they, the, uh, the government didn't enter into the, into the equation at all, neither in Chorus nor in JLR, with both acquisitions we made. The only time we have had regulatory issues have been like we do in India, when you want to curtail an operation and lay off people and, and shrink an organization, then the government, local government come, becomes involved because they are uh, responsible for jobs in, an, in a particular area. But regulatorily, it is between the buyer and the seller as though you were buying vegetables in a market. And for a period of time, I think we were accused of buying vegetables in a market. Today, things look a little different as far as JLR is concerned. The cultural issues? What hmm? are the cultural challenges? Sorry? What are the cultural challenges that you faced? As far as cultural cha challenges, there could have been several. But what we have been doing in each of the cases where we have acquired companies is we satisfy ourselves that the cultures between, between the two con uh, companies are convergent, that we don't have different manners of doing business or different values or different ethical standards. Because if we had that, it would be very difficult for the two companies to operate. As far as cultural differences, that is dealing with the British against the Indians or the Koreans in, against the Indians, if you have a respect for that particular management and allows, that allows it to work autonomously to the extent they can, other than the controls that you might ex in, uh, exercise in finance or in strategies, etc. I think we have found both in Korea and in, in the UK, the management is quite adaptable to working with an Indian company, if that Indian company they perceive as being sensible and rational and fair and not, a, not obtrusive. 